right. Jeez, this is a warm. It's a bit warm, isn't it? Yeah. I know sure. these New York apartment, they really go hot, hard with the heat. You yeah, know? but then sometimes that's nice because it's cozy. I know. But I mean, I always hot. think it's too hot. And it's very bad for my dry skin. Oh, <laughs> you have very dry skin, do you? Oh, do you yeah. moisturize it? Of course I moisturize. Oh, what's your moisturized choice? Well, currently I'm using, I think I'm using Cetaphil. No, no, I'm not using Cetaphil. I'm using uh, CeraVe. CeraVe. But I, I don't have like a... I don't have one that I prefer really. I mean, I'll, I'll get like the, the Vaseline cocoa butter one or the Vaseline aloe vera, C uh, CeraVe, Cetaphil, nice. Eucerin. I don't moisturize. You don't moisturize? I put it on my face. Have you hung out with any black people here in the United States? Yeah. Have they not discussed moisturization with you? Yeah, but I haven't needed to. My skin's pretty soft. No, but it's not. <laughs> you don't get dry skin in, in these New York just dry, my, just dry my, winters? Just on my face. That's it. Really? Sometimes I use a bit of hand cream, but no, oh, nowhere man. else on my, my body. skin. Right now, like my inner thighs and my like my arse. Really, your arse? Oh man, it gets so dry really? around my hips. No, mine just gets dry. Sometimes like I... under my under my arms here and like in the sides, uh, like under my armpits. No. Are you kidding me? No. I get acne though. Sometimes I get I get. I got acne when I was a teenager, but I still get it. Twenty eight years old. Well, that's great. You know, it means you're still young. <laughs> yeah. You know. So I get when I get a, when I was a teenager I hated getting pimples. Now when I get a pimple I'm like, "Oh yeah, baby. Still getting still getting pimples, man. Still getting pimples." Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, listen, it, this isn't a moisturization podcast, but I'm but a big you know, fan. We went there. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, moisturization. Uh, I I actually I find that I get a very positive reaction uh, from women when they feel my soft skin. They like that. Yeah, of course. Ali Wong makes a joke about finally uh, having sex with an Asian man. It's like making love to a dolphin. But I like to think that I have that sort of almost comparative soft Asian skin. Okay. After living in China, I can tell you that is a thing. Definitely. Can I touch you? You, you, can, you can rub my skin. It's, it's quite a, soft. Yeah, it's quite a me soft. too. Oh. Right there. That's my that's career the, over. It just non, began and it's non, gone. Non-consensual <laughs> contact. I but, need to ask now. No, I'm, I'm kidding anyway. Don't Jesus don't. Christ. I'm I'm I, I'm unabusable, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, so um, yeah, I'm a moisturizer. That that's that's the end of that discussion. I am shocked. Effie Claire face moisturizer. Yeah, I'm not big. Swear on, by it. But I, I don't even wash my face. I wash my face with honey. This is really not sex or dating topics, but you wash your face with honey. Yeah, it's a natural antiseptic. Wow. I'm actually not a great face washer. Like, as in, like, I just have a shower and then I moisturize my face. I'm not, like, a big face scrubber, but I do it sometimes. Yeah. But I also don't spend a lot of money on facial moisturizers. I once asked one of the makeup artists on, I think it was actually on Dance with the Stars, and I, I said, listen, like, I, I said, I just chuck on, like, the Vaseline shit on my face. Like, I don't, I don't buy, like, an expensive face moisturizer. And she said, well, if your skin doesn't have a negative reaction, then that's totally fine. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people argue with me and say that's not true, but anyway, all I'm saying is that, you know... No, your skin looks fine, plus you have a little bit of a beard. Well, that, that's, yeah, that's a recent phenomenon. But, uh, you know, listen, I, I, I believe in moisturization, and I think if more, uh, if more men... The sex will be better. That's how we leave no, it. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I, I don't actually think it helps the sex to be smooth. I mean, I don't do it to be smooth. Slipping on I do it. Place. Yeah, yeah. You got to slide around like a slip and slide. <laughs> but uh, no, but I, I think that uh, it's it, for some people, it's, it, it's really quite a relief. And, you know, Bill Bird's a whole routine about it. But a lot of guys don't realize that they should be moisturizing. Yeah. You well, know, so. I might just go buy a moisturizer. Just put out there. Maybe that's been my problem the whole time. I, I think you should moisturize. I think you're perhaps not aware of the, the benefits of moisturization. Okay. This is great. I learned so much. So anyway, uh, we're, ba we're back. We're back. Oh, and I want to say a huge thank you to everybody's feedback. Great. Yeah, I was nervous actually when we first did this. I woke up the next day and I had a little bit of, oh, Jesus, did I overshare? And everybody was so great about it that it made me like encourage me, and I, I felt really happy that people were positive with my honesty. I was worried on your behalf too. I mean, I, I, I guess I think you were sharing more in the last episode, and I was, con yeah, I, I, I was concerned how people would respond, but I was very, I was very happy with the feedback and very happy with the uh, 
the expression of desire for more from the people that heard it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it, yeah, no, I'm excited now because I was kind of like, feck it, just go all in and say whatever. Because I, I wouldn't even, I don't even really talk about dirty stuff on stage. So that was well. A big let's thing just me. let's just stop you there oh, and right. question the whole concept of dirty stuff. Yeah. Why is it dirty? Um. Because that's the genre it's labeled. I know, but it's a shame. <laughs> it's a shaming term, isn't it? I mean, it's fine. We've accepted it, but it is very interesting when people say like twenty minutes of clean, suggesting because, that sex is dirty. But even when I went home, a few people mentioned, "Oh, it's great. You're very clean." Like my comedy. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, that's a big. Th it's a big thing over here in the sense that there's a lot of unclean comedy there's a lot of dirty comedy there's not as much dirty comedy in ireland so there's not as much of a need for the sort of like is it clean or is it not clean but in a sense it's like some sort of like victorian slash religious judgment yeah. that sexual material is dirty yeah no, it's, it's true. really silly when you think about it no it is silly and even i said to des since we did this uh episode last episode i started talking a little bit more about my sex life on stage and it was actually a lot of fun yeah. And no, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that you should only know, do that. No, but I should be able to do all of it as for me personally as a comedian. Um, and people do make big judgments about sort of sexual material being less than. Yeah. And look, if it's a joke and it's funny, great. I'll never be too graphic because that's not my nature. I'm yeah. not going to be like, well, I don't even know. But, but yeah, it's. It's, it's you're fun. not going to be talking about anal beads on stage like no, you talked I, you about know, in episode one. You read one. my mind. I was just about to say, I'm not going to be talking about anal. But I mean, like, sometimes it can be too graphic. Someone will be like, and then, you know, they get into the kind of like, oh, it was pulling it out. And there was like, yeah, I you know, know yeah, it's, like, it's just too much. Oh, that's just a bit more shock than funny. But if it's funny. Yeah, well, it takes time. Actually, in, in terms of uh, uh, sexual material on stage, it does take time to get the balance right. Because, you know, I have that routine about period sex. Yeah. Which... You know, it's. I think it's a great routine, and it's like, I mean, some people consider it a bit graphic, but actually, I, I consider it too much like normal life, like in terms of like women have to do with their periods, for it to really be a problem. But anyway, it did take me a long time to figure out how to pitch that. Yeah. And actually, I mean, I joke in the show that I stopped doing it, but that is actually true. When I originally wrote it, I didn't figure out how to pitch it, and I stopped doing it because it, 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 the crowds would start to, they would start to retreat. Yeah. You know, like they, just a little bit uncomfortable. That's it. They were uncomfortable, yeah. yeah. So, it, it, you know, it is your responsibility. To, I mean, it's, you can blame the audience if you want, but it is your responsibility to make sure that they're comfortable. If they're uncomfortable because of what you're saying, you are responsible for that. No, yeah, 100%. You can't just blame society. I know, and yeah, well, and sometimes, depending on where you are as well, it, it can be a society thing in regards to some people aren't comfortable with women maybe being, I went did a show um, up, up in um oh jesus anyway it was up there it was like connecticut or something but i remember them saying up there me, connecticut <laughs> it's very far away <laughs> anyway it's but up I, there like deep into mead but uh, yeah deep into, well i love how you said i'm from the mead dublin border i'm from kildare oh kildare dublin border sorry my bad it's fine now. i just Here's was like up. i was i was just like not <laughs> focusing on that no you're fine but no so i guess so when i was there and i was doing a set and i went to talk about i have this story where i had to get the morning after pill for a friend back in ireland when it first came out um but yeah, i could feel them pull back now they were all 60s plus when it first came out it came out when i was 19. the morning after pill mm -hmm. no you mean it became available to get without... oh sorry available to get over the counter right yeah, yeah sorry yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I think you'll find when you were like two years old, uh, <laughs> morning after pills were being procured. I only had to take the morning after pill for the first time, um, like last weekend in my whole life. Oh, oh really? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because of irresponsibility. You can be very responsible and those things can just be very flimsy. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you had, you had, a, you had a mishap yeah. and then you had to get... The morning it's after just pill. Weird. No, you used to have to go. Uh, you used to have to go to like the the well woman's clinic. Okay. Well, you, before you could go into the pharmacy. Yeah. Well, yeah. That you had to. I, I think it was you had to get a prescription. Actually, that's what it was. It was. Yeah. Because I I had actually um for, for a friend of mine who was a little younger, I had to a couple of times go to the doctor and get a prescription. And it was never for me. So three times went to the doctor, got a prescription, and then another friend 
had had unprotected sex and she was too embarrassed to go to the pharmacy but when it's not for you you're like oh it's grand so I went but I didn't know they had to interview and they interviewed me and they were like when's your last period and I was like feck I don't know when her last period oh you was. didn't prep and they were like oh, when did it happen and it was so many questions I could feel myself sweating there was a clock on that I thought and I was only like that was only 19 so and then I came out and I slipped it in her bag and uh, we ran you, off. You're morning after fraud. I'm like a morning after pill drug dealer. Jeez. It was fun. Yeah, that's so funny. They do the morning after pill came out when I was 19. <laughs> but, uh, um, so, but oh, oh yeah, so sorry, th that whole story was, you, you were trying to say that crowds get uncomfortable. Yeah, do you know, and even when I went back to Ireland and I was performing, something that my dad said to me was like, it's good that you're clean in regards to a lot of people who come to this specific show are from all ages, so, and after I did that show, I was like, I was probably stick more to clean. Yeah, but I the funny seen them pull back. But the funny thing is that often, like I, I find you that can be a misjudgment, you know. And it might have been just that I wasn't, I wasn't like maybe if I did it now or if I did it in a couple of years, uh, maybe I just wasn't ready as a comedian to be able to commit to that. Maybe they sensed. So no, but you, there's sometimes you find like the old, the older, the really much older people in the crowd actually love the dirty stuff. Like they love Mrs. Brown. I mean, Mrs. Brown is like all dirty jokes. Yeah, but you is know? it? Well, yeah, but Mrs. Br well, yeah. Okay. No, I'm just saying. Like often, like a, a lot of times, if I'm doing like the, the let's just say the period sex bit, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll usually have somebody from the crowd come back and say, "Oh, there was these two old ones, and they were loving it. They were loving the dirty stuff." So sometimes you can make a judgment based on the older people struggle with it, but actually, they love it. Yeah, well, I also wonder as well, would they love it if they saw a young girl if they're doing well, it? Well, that, that, that I cannot answer. Yes. That may be, in and Ireland especially. Yeah, because there still is that, a little bit of women don't, aren't as vocal. Yes. With sex and sex which, life. Which, which we're tackling here. We're tackling. Um, Not that it's only about women. You said you had some feedback, like we want to hear more about guys too. Did you say you had that? Yeah, do you know, I had one thing actually, yeah, we want to f find out more from the guy perspective as well, um, in regards to, uh, well, that was more dating, I guess. So oh, right. Someone reached out about um, when do you know that the guy is just for sex or relationships, but Yeah, but I we guess can discuss that another time. Another time, but I guess as well, just if a woman was to be vocal about what she needs and what she wants, you as the guy, would you kind of think, this is great or would you be like oh a bit offended like oh she thinks what i was doing was bad before so that's kind of the other well no i mean that 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 well you're older so you're more wise no no but i mean i do have a, a very specific routine about that in my okay. show about <laughs> i have uh, to start watching more of his shows okay. <laughs> uh about uh oh you do yeah where you say that the guy sh sorry i did say that where the, the woman should communicate but the guy should communicate, and we already mentioned that last uh, last week. Can you stay focused for five seconds here? Fuck's sake. These <laughs> Americans, I tell you. No, but uh, in, in my routine, the, the joke is that uh, women have to tell the guy because every woman is different, whereas every man is the same. But they're not. Yeah, but they're, they're, uh, there's definitely a lot less variety. Okay. In like, in that, obviously, the in, in pop culture, it is accepted that it's much harder to make a woman achieve orgasm than it is a man. Yeah. So even that alone shows yeah. that, because it, it, it's very varied ways to get a, a woman to have an orgasm. Yeah. Was how many times has the guy not come for you? No, yeah, never. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, but that's the thing as well, because once women orgasm or once women masturbate, you realize actually it's quite quickly how we can orgasm. So then it will, it's kind of frustration that you can't repeat that in the bedroom. Um, like I, and I had thought I had orgasm during sex before and then I did orgasm during sex and I was like, oh, I had not orgasm during sex. So then there's just different levels for women. It seems to be a bit more, you guys just come and that's it. But for us, there's like different intensities and kind of getting past that and you need to be comfortable with your partner so you can really just relax and let it happen. Yeah, so that's so the whole is, thing. You're right, it is a little bit more complicated. I, I think women are more complicated. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm very confident in saying that I think sexually women are more complicated. Yeah. I think there's there's way more uh, variation in, in what they can be into. So when you ask me, uh, do you tell a guy? I say it's essential that okay. you tell a guy, I, in my opinion. And I already said in the last one I had told, 
or I, I tried to communicate with a guy and he broke up with me and then another ex-boyfriend this ex specific ex-boyfriend is Irish when he would eat me out he would bite me <laughs> he would bite you yeah. and so I told him I was like, that, like bite you where like on my clit really yeah and I oh my like, god I think he was trying to be like fun and rough or something oh my god and I said Jesus, I I'm actually uncomfortable now I know my, my vagina just actually started to hurt when I said it and I'm sure everybody any woman who's listening probably feels the same but I said to him no you can't do that and if you don't mind just I'll tell you what to do and he was like so upset he was like oh, I'm a bit embarrassed now I don't want to do it again I'm after like fucking up yeah him. yeah yeah he, his ego was bruised yeah and he never ate me out again really mm -hmm. yeah which I can understand well, I can understand why a guy would 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 wilt, which is unfortunate, yeah. you know. But I like I, in 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 the jokes that I do, I do say that women don't want to tell the guy because the guys would be like, "Don't look, tell me, I know what I'm doing." Yeah. And guys don't want to ask because they don't want to look like they don't know what they're doing. Even though if you ask, that shows that you do know what you're doing. A hundred percent, and it's so important because if 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 um if the guy. Like, so I think a lot of guys, if a woman, because it's like, oh, it's so hard to make a woman come, it's more acceptable not to make her come. And then she's just always kind of about to reach it. And then that's so frustrating. So you're always in this, it's just not healthy for, for especially if you're in a relationship, because then you're just mad. You're just mad at your partner. And you but I'm telling you right now, I mean, this has definitely been my experience. American women are way more comfortable yeah. with communicating their needs for to get to where they need to go. I and I totally agree because my last sexual partner, that was the first time I did that, where I was like, okay, I'm doing this, you're doing that, and I was able to have multiple enjoyments in, in once banging or whatever you want to call it, um, where that had never happened to me before. But that's just because that happened to you when you were here. That was here. That was recently, very recently. So it's like just because I learned how to finally communicate what I want. I hadn't before and that's I think a lot of being here and having listening to my friends and then being like no I told them what to do and you need to do this and you need to say what you want because my, my joke in the show about comparing American women to Irish women is that American women will like just like tell you where you need to be <laughs> whereas an Irish woman will be like I know sure, whatever you're doing yourself now like yeah. I, I just just, just whatever you do, don't talk about it. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry I, about me. I'll look after myself later. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. It's like, I go into the shower. Give me that shower head. It's lovely, by the way. Anyway, um, no, but uh, that, that's so true. And as well, you, I think a lot of, I don't know, again, not to generalize Irish women, but I think a lot of Irish women as well, we don't, we don't want to offend you guys. So they'd be like, did you have a good time? And we're like, oh yeah, it was great. Like I didn't realize how much of faking I was doing it. I would fake it so much. Yeah, and I've never understood the faking because you're really only hurting yourself. I know, but I was just trying to be hospitable. <laughs> I just wanted everybody to have a good time. I thought there was, it was just my problem. Yeah, but what you mean is you wanted him to, like you're not yeah, having a good time. No, because I was like, oh, it's my problem. I'm broken. I can't. And then anytime I got that intense feeling, I was like, oh, this feels weird. And he did to stop and I'd be like, stop, stop, stop. Okay, let's. Yeah, well, that, that, but that I think too is down to experience, right? That you have to start to understand your body. Because well, yeah. if you're, if you're, if you don't know what's going on and you're like afraid, because I, I definitely noticed that certainly when I was younger, that there would be a lot of like, uh, a woman would like lose it. Mm -hmm. And I guess that was partially because I didn't know what I was doing as much, but also partially because they weren't as comfortable. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, and comfortability is the biggest thing. And just being like, okay, with your whatever facial expression you're going to make or yeah, so just being comfortable with a partner, that's probably why one night stands were never good for me. Whereas when I meet someone that I can wait a little longer, get to know them, I just feel more relaxed in their company. But certainly just to, just to keep focused on the, the communicating part. Yeah. Um, I think if, if a guy gets offended, I mean, listen, I've had, because I, I like going down. I, I, cause like you said it on the last podcast, which I liked, which is that uh, giving somebody pleasure is quite attractive. So like if they're loving it, that's hot, yeah, right? So, so I, 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 I very much subscribe to that. I mm. love it when they're loving it. In fact, to be honest, like it's kind of pointless to me unless they're enjoying it. Like in mm. terms of my own enjoyment, that's like the only thing that really gets me going. Now I definitely put myself sort of in the, the secondary position because, cause I kind of know that I'm going to. I'm gonna get there whenever I need to get there. Yeah. So I kind of consider them to be the primary thing, but it's kind of selfish because the more they're into it, the more I get into it, right? Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I remember, you know, not that long ago, but not that recent either, 
because I, I like going down. It's like a, a thing that I, I like to do. Uh, but she was uh, like, a, like a lesbian for a long time. Okay. Like had various lesbian relationships and had only recently come back to the dark side. <laughs> and, and I was maybe a tiny bit more subconscious than normal because I knew that she would have had a number of experts down there. Because <laughs> you, know, you, you, know, you know, like a woman kind of knows what she likes. More. Like, like, don't get me wrong, I, I, I have a pretty decent success rate uh, going down. But at the same time, like if I've known, like, so if somebody was like, has been playing football with fucking David Beckham, all their life of yeah. course if you if you meet them you're gonna think well they're gonna think i'm a shit footballer you know mm -hmm. so they've had like a ton of you know like david beckham's down there fucking killing it with their high level skill uh tongue action and so i was a touch a touch more subconscious than normal but i kind of i i asked her to I, you know, I wouldn't normally ask in, in, in a situation where I'm comfortable anyway, but I get, because I was more subconscious, I asked her to like guide me and she wasn't great with the guiding and also didn't give me the, the feeling that like she was into it. So it was kind of like, I was kind of like, well, listen, if you're not into it, just tell me what you want me to do and, and I'll do it. But she wasn't really doing that. So yeah. it was like, it was a, a kind of like a, a bit of a sort of a false start situation. But I also partially feel that maybe uh, she just wasn't that into it. like from me or from guys maybe in general because she was she was very good sexually but that that just didn't become like a big part of our relationship but i don't know if that was partially my own sort of paranoia that uh, i couldn't live up to what she had before or if indeed she just wasn't into it but i would have preferred her to let me know what she was into it when i was down there but she just wasn't really yeah but Sorry. whatever no 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 <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, uh, the point being that I, I, I think... Uh, and would you go down on a woman first in sex? Because I, I feel like guys should go down first and it's like the down payment. Because then so, if they don't orgasm during sex. Who, like, the woman? Like if you go down on the woman, it's kind of like, as the, it, like while foreplay is happening before sex. It's like a good down payment, right? Well, I always go. I always try to go down before. Yeah, I only because had you that. can really take the pressure off yourself. Yeah, I only had that recently. Well, happened. it's much easier to make a woman come by going down. Yeah. So if you can, I mean, some women don't like if you make them come. Well, in my experience, I find that some women just find it so much easier to come when you go down on them that you're, you're better to just do it just in case. But then some won't won't let you make them come because actually they get very sensitive after they come, so they don't want to come oh. early. But that, 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 again, that's like, that, that to me is into the very varied world of women. <laughs> uh, you know, it, well, then that comes back to what you say about just say what you want or communicate what you want, absolutely. And then just not be embarrassed or not being, yeah, just not worry about offending the guy and guys don't get offended. Yeah, I never, I mean, I never get offended. It'd be interesting if guys actually hit us up more and told us, especially, yeah, just told us kind of how they feel about it. For the record, I've had women get a little bit offended when I have said like, I've had a little bit of a problem back in the States because I'm not circumcised because I was actually born in London to my great shame. It had nothing to do with me. My parents happened to be living in London at the time, but I'm not circumcised. My brothers are, you know, the American guys are all circumcised, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so when, I'm, nice when I'm with American women, uh, they, uh, they, they're not great sometimes with the uh, uncircumcised penis. They can be like a little, little harsh on the head, yeah. which the head is a little more sensitive than the uncircum, than the circumcised penis. Mm -hmm. uh, and once or twice, I've had to say like, "Yo, you gotta, you gotta ease up there," you know, because you know that it's that sort of like oh, jumpy. Yeah. It's past the point of pleasure into the yeah. the biting on the clit feeling, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, they, 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 I, I felt that they've kind of like felt a bit bad, you know. Oh. So you, you, you know, it, it can. People, it, if it can dent your ego, but I, th I think the message from this should be never be offended because you can't know. Oh, I totally agree with you. I always ask now because, um, just because before someone was like, oh, I don't like that. And I was like, shite, well, I didn't know, but if you told me, I can fix it. And then it's like, then it's all better. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, nowadays, I, I, if I'm going to do something that I haven't done, unless I... I'm, just certain things I will kind of say like are you into that you yeah. know 
But I, going down, I, I usually don't ask. But you know, if, if somebody's not into it, they'll usually stop you. I mean, yeah, I've, had, you I've, been, I've been with one or two women in my life that are just very paranoid about going down, like they don't like it. And I think, I think that possibly has a little bit to do with sort of paranoia about their, their grooming slash flavor. <laughs> No, slash and smell that, and that's that's something yeah that i'm sure a lot of women will like they get over eventually but i'm sure that is a huge thing for women as well just being a little scared about you could even when i come over here i know you already have an episode about it but um uh, like hair on your vagina is something that's people talk about a lot here that i never heard people talk about in ireland sure i never knew what way it should be back home because no one ever really spoke about it yeah i mean i did talk about that in the previous yeah. but just just uh, but there you go, that, that gives a another bit of like, a little bit of, oh, I hope it's okay. And, yeah. And yeah, same with, yeah. Going and and then a lot, and sometimes women have had very bad experiences with a guy going down, so it puts them off. Yeah. I, de I, I definitely had an experience where I was dating this one woman, this is a long time ago, and uh, she would not let me go down. Like, just like, just sorry, I just don't do that. Yeah. I don't like it. And one time, I guess, I kind of was like strong in my desire and I, I, I guess I sort of like really pushed like to, to give it a shot and like she did enjoy it and it was like who was the asshole that fucking ruined this for you you know so I think sometimes it can be a case where if somebody who doesn't know what they've been and by the way I'm not saying that like hey you know I'll cure anybody's uh, I'll cure anybody's uncomfortability with cunnilingus. Ah, uh, yeah, just say cunnilingus. Call me the, uh, the pussy whisperer. <laughs> the pussy whisperer. But, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But no, but I'm, I'm, I'm jo this is a joke. This is a joke. It's okay, we know. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway. I, I, I do like pussy whisperer. Though. But I, I don't think there's any man out there that has been like, no, I, I, I just had a bad experience with poor jobs. <laughs> she bit so, me. <laughs> so don't blow me. You know, yeah, I mean, listen, I've had one or two bad blowjobs, but really, to be honest, it's like the worst blowjob is still a pleasurable experience. And you still do want to be told because sometimes like the most recent blowjob I'd given and even when I talk about it, I'm like hesitant to say the words there. But like he was like shaking and in my head, I was like, I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know. Yeah, well, that can be sign. bad. It, it can could be too be much sensitivity. Too, too sensitive. Could yeah. be. But he should tell you. But I, I mean, but I, I asked. I was like, "Is it good?" And he said, "Yeah." But I was also like, "I don't know," you know. Yeah, I mean, I've had I that. Hope so. I've had that where it's been too sensitive, and yeah. I, I sort of, I, I, I allow, I, I deal with it for a bit, uh, you know, because I don't want to like hurt their feelings. But if it gets to the point of not being able to handle it, I will. Tell well, what it. makes it too sensitive? What you know, like, it like really, it really depends, you know. Uh, sometimes it, I, I don't know, yeah. actually. But I, I assume it has something to do with like, I don't know, like maybe their mouth shape or the angle or, you know, but there, there are certain times where it's just a bit like too much. Yeah. And I, I think just from looking at the Oh My God Yes website, which I don't know if we mentioned yet or not, but it was mm -hmm. one of the recommendations was to look at that site, which I, which we're going to talk about that site quite a bit throughout the next few uh, months. But looking at the Oh My God Yes website, th there was a description of uh, a clitoral sensitivity that very much matched my experience of uh, head of my penis sensitivity. Yeah. Uh, so I assume there's a certain similarity there, which is kind of like the difference between a fun tickle and when, you know, when you, when you were a kid and you used to get tickled and it was like funny for a while, and then eventually it's like, yo, get the fuck off me, get off me, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah, that's what I was afraid. I was nervous when I when I saw him kind of shake, and I was like, I don't know if this is good or not. But that's again, you just every person's different. Everybody's different. And you have to just be honest. And I was like, I even said I was like, I won't be offended. Just let me know. I had a boyfriend back in Ireland, and he would rate my blowjobs. He would rate Isn't your blowjobs. Yeah, he would go. That was like an A minus this time. Get out of here. Got, yeah. Guaranteed abuser of the future. Oh yeah, I was. I'm glad I got out of that. That's a situation. controller right there. Oh yeah. He yeah, rated yeah. your blowjobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was not attractive. Wow. So you know, I don't know why it's worse when they're not attractive as well. I was younger, so. There's only one rating for blowjobs, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the rating? That's the pussy Thank whisperer you. for you. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs> but you know, it's funny because so some of the feedback was so great and one of the girls sent me a lot of feedback and she told me she went out and she bought a vibrator for the first time and she told me to tell everybody 
45 euros reduced to 7 euros Blanchestown and Summers go get them <laughs> oh right so she bought she bought a vibrator after listening to our after, first podcast well, and we didn't even discuss vibrators I know and I well I had discussed with her a lot uh, she'd be a very good friend of mine doing this and I discussed her about masturbation I said I haven't gotten a vibrator yet and I kind of put it in her head and she said now they'd be the same age as me one of the girls had messaged her saying look I'm gonna get this and they kind of went out on a girls trip and they got it and she said she's now currently in a in a, it's not a relation. It's a very new sexual relationship, but she said that she used it one of the nights, and she didn't feel the need to go out and see him. But she was like, it was, kind, it was kind of nice in that way because then it slowed her down from rushing too much with him as well. But she said it was like changed her life. She wow. sent it to everybody, and it was masturbation really, nation. I think maybe that'll be the name yeah, of the podcast. Master, really, it used it's, to be called Ireland because I've never used I've never used a vibrator, and I will eventually. Uh, but I do, I have you. I, you haven't used one? No, no, never. I haven't even bought one. And she sent me the picture of it. She told me she's going to buy me one. But no, I will. I, By the I, way, just for the record, just so you know the difference between Ireland and America, you can go downstairs to Rite Aid and get one. Yeah, no, I They just, have them in Rite Aid. But I'm like, I think I'm like baby steps. You can buy in them regard. in like boots here. No, I, I still think I'm like, you know, because I only mas started masturbation recent, like in the last few years. My next step was someone said the shower head. And so I use that a lot. And it's. I think a lot of women do. Yeah, I mean, or if I, they don't, they should. But then I guess the next step would be. But the funny thing is that you know, it, it's funny you've given two vibrator descriptions, both of which have said that they've affected people's uh, sexual oh, relationships yeah, my negatively. Friend, my friend in but actually, no, but I think that was positive the... for my friend at home because she kind of said, you know, she was laughing, kind of like, well, it's it's slowing it down a little. You know, she felt like, oh, well, I don't need to go see him. Well, yeah, this. because you don't want to be just completely driven by lust, or certainly you yeah. don't want to be completely driven by like desire and it's helping her then for when she meets him again kind of to be like well i like this over here maybe well i've always said i mean i'll have to find that routine from des functional that i did about masturbation but like i've I, I've, I've i've always said that masturbation is, is key for uh women to have better sex and and i think possibly in the past because women haven't been as open about it or perhaps they don't do it as much it may be part of the reason why women find it harder to orgasm but i do think that once you once you know how it happens i totally agree because the only reason why i orgasm for the first time in sex was because i was masturbating while i was doing it and i had tried with an ex-boyfriend to masturbate while doing it but he was just thought it was so hot he would like explode straight away really he couldn't control it and he would just come straight away. Well, that's his. You gotta learn. You gotta learn. And so this is only you know and then so the most recent guy he was very good at being able to like kind of you know he could just last longer i guess and he's maybe more experienced or something i don't know but yeah so that was the first time where i was like oh i have to do this as well yeah um so it was really great experience. that's good to learn that yeah it was like it's changed my whole life I, oh i was thinking this as well so just a little bit about this guy did end up rejecting me but i was so it's the first time i've ever kind of something so who ended up rejecting you it's the guy who the first the first time okay so the most recent guy that i had made me orgasm during sex for the first time or like come during sex, I guess. We've had, like, we've we've had just, nice feelings. We had our previous chat, plus we had a, a chat that we haven't put up yet. So yeah. I was just concerned that perhaps no, we haven't discussed it on so this particular... So small thing was seeing a guy, who are like, you know, we weren't exclusive because he lived in a different state and he came to visit. Um, but we had talked so much for so long that I was so comfortable and I got to know him. So it kind of, I felt really comfortable when we were going to have sex. And I hadn't had sex in a while, so I really wanted to to come but i thought i'd orgasm before during sex i'd got nice feelings but it wasn't until i was with him i was like oh, oh i've never had this before this is amazing and then we had so much of that that when we decided when he kind of decided i'm not ready for the next step and i live in a different state this isn't gonna work out i wasn't hurt because i was like well i didn't waste my time it's the first time i ever felt oh well, i didn't put in all this energy with sex and because i was like oh i had this great i felt very satisfied and i was like okay it's fine like it didn't it, yeah i don't know it just it's like I handled the rejection better because of it. Yeah. Is that weird? No, it's not weird. I mean, it may not always be the experience though either. Just to like, you I know, know, like, like as in like. I just feel like before. There, there, when there I may had be sex. another. There may be another time where, despite the sexual satisfaction, you still feel hard done it's by. Like, you know? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's easier because he lives in a different state. I don't have to see him. Yeah, yeah. Or perhaps yeah, because you probably knew that it, it was doomed anyway. Yeah, well, and just not being frustrated. Sometimes, like when my ex boyfriend, we would do it so much but i'd always feel like a little low afterwards like because I, if you weren't getting enough out of it because it, it wasn't it was like tough. i was about to reach a high and then it would come down from mm. it and it was just it actually made me feel quite sad whereas this time i just was like so satisfied and 
Oh, and I just, I like, if I, if I could yelp this guy, I would. I would yelp review him or something. <laughs> I would tell women to go see him. Yeah. Like, lovely four, man. Four and a half stars. Also, as well, I like it when it's intimate and slow. And my ex-boyfriend was very rough and wild and aggressive. And so for me, a personal thing, that's why it per he was like nice and gentle yeah. and, and again, communicative. Very communicative. Communicative? I can't say words. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Well, since we're talking about communicating, you know, <laughs> but no, but um, all, all joking aside, again, that's down to communication, though. I mean, were you able to tell that previous boyfriend that was rough, like, yo, it's, it can't always be rough? Yeah, yeah, no, and I think he boarded into abuse because I told him a bunch I didn't like it, and then he would ignore me. Really? Yeah, he, like, punched me in the arse, and it's so weird. Punched you in the arse? Yeah, I can times. understand a spank, but... No, punch, and I told him I didn't like it, and he would still do it, and then when I told my American girlfriends, they were like, Katie, that's abuse, it's an abusive relationship. When I told my Irish girlfriends, they all laughed, but it's just because it's so ridiculous. Like, what a specific... Punched you in the arse? Yeah, it's so weird. Well, yeah, but he liked it kind of rough and in control. This is the same guy who bit me. It really wasn't a good relationship, to be honest. I'm glad I got it. Yeah, well, that. he just doesn't know what he's at. And I, I have heard, God, I mean, I've heard just a lot of women talk about men that don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And th that's not to say that there's a lot of women that don't know what they're doing, but there is a lot of guys out there that just don't get it. And perhaps in the future we can discuss the effects of porn and different things. A few people message me saying that. Mm -hmm. We won't get into it now because I would like to get... I would like to get one or two experts in on that because I, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of conjecture and anecdotal evidence. And I'd love to get down to the brass tacks of, of what's what. But certainly, yeah. uh, maybe the case with this guy, but in general, I, I have felt that a lot of guys think that, uh, like, trust me, a lot of women like it rough from time to time, but I think a lot of guys think that it should always be that way or certainly that they only think about what they like. I actually read a, a quote and I can't remember who it was but I'm pretty sure they're not going to be listening to stick it out to me for not quoting them but it was that there is a very um that the passion and aggression is very similar that the emotions are very similar and sometimes mm. that that can be very confusing so you're like you're bordering on passion it can slip into aggression mm. we had a very passionate relationship but it would then it would slip into very aggressive so when I, I read good, that when it's I was a good dating, quote. yeah I can't even remember where I read it. passion I was, can drift into aggression yeah which which I guess when, when balanced correctly is ideal. Yeah. Because you, 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 there definitely seems to be a desire for a certain amount of aggression at times, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then I... I've actually, I've been surprised once or twice in my life, you know, have some dates with like, you know, like particularly in Ireland, right? I had a couple of dates with like some very just like Irish, you know, nice, nice women. And uh, eventually when we had sex, like they, they they really like it quite aggressive yeah. like and and demand a higher level of aggression from me than i i was providing and i'm like where the fuck did you come out like who's been hiding under that sort of <laughs> at lone head <laughs> you know who's been hiding under this lion makes you a cup of tea cup of lion's tea <laughs> yeah it's like but make sure it's fucking hot so it burns the arse yeah. off you know? like, it's, it's just, but that like, and another question i got was I, you know, an Irish girl wrote to me and said, I don't believe that women actually like choking or like that sort of... Oh, aggression. right. That's that interesting because sort of that, that's not... That's definitely... And how have you, found, have you found a lot of women asking you to choke them? Well, in America, you definitely get more choking requests. Because I, my, my roommate he has a fair amount of sex and he was saying a lot... Now, it's with American ladies, but a lot of them will ask him to choke or punch and hit. And he's like... Yeah, it's... it's yeah, the choking... I mean... In my show, I joke and I say I don't like the choking thing because I, 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 I never know what to do. You know, it's like how close to death do you want to pretend to be? <laughs> you know, like, you want to. And and the other joke I say is, uh, you know, I'm afraid I'll be into it. You know, it's like you want to fucking die because I've seen Dexter and that shit becomes addictive. You know, but in actual fact, um, it, since I. I sometimes joke when I'm in Ireland that the choking requests have gone up by 76% since I've moved to the United States. But there, there, there is, there certainly, there seems to be a, a, a reasonable size of the population that likes a little bit of choking. Because I have never choked. I have never thought, I'll choke you a bit to turn you on. I have only ever choked when somebody has said, choke me a little bit. Why well, did a guy choke me while we had our clothes on and we were kissing? And I got such a fright. 
so. No, the only thing I've done without request that could be considered, um, like, physical would be like some hair pulling, but nobody, you know, and and I would only ever do it when I feel like. Uh, I don't even like that. Yeah, well, I would only ever do it when I feel like it'll, it'll go down well. Yeah. It's not like a normal thing, but it's the only thing that I would ever do that. Uh, and if, if if you felt like a negative reaction, I would immediately cease. But usually, it's like a certain sort of a. Well, I know, because I've been, after that experience with my personal choking thing, I've been really trying to figure out why people like it. And I got told it's because it's the ultimate pleasure. Whereas, up until recently, I wasn't even comfortable with my own orgasms. Never mind you giving me the ultimate pleasure. So I don't... Well, I mean, there is a, there is a proven thing that uh, asphyxiation can increase the orgasm. However... I don't want to but, increase. I'm pretty happy with how it Yeah, is. but I've never... I've, <laughs> any of the choking I've done is, is, a, is a choking simulation, you know, based yeah. on the request. But it, essentially, it's a simulation. It's not actually like asphyxiation. Yeah. I mean, that's how Michael Hutchins died, you know, because he was self-asphyxiating while he no, was masturbating. Well, know. certainly that was the rumor. Oh, he was uh, from In Excess. I don't know what that is. Uh, In Excess was a huge band in the 1980s. Oh, God. Okay. You'll, you, you'd know one of their songs, but of course now, because you've put me on the spot, I can't... Um, I can't bloody, oh God, I can't bloody r remember the, the, some of their huge, huge songs, but... Uh, I'll look them up after. Yeah. But anyway, um, anyway, just with the choking thing. Some people oh, yeah. do like it. You, you like doing that, by the way. The, oh, I just remember <laughs> some, uh, the, uh But anyway, in, in reference to somebody saying, I don't believe anybody. See, and, and that's the whole thing about communication, which is... Somebody has messaged you and said, I, I don't believe anybody could be into choking. Yeah. That they must be deluding themselves or giving in to some sort of abusive man. Whereas some people clearly are. And, 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 and it is very much an each to their own yeah. situation. Yeah. So what was your... <gasps> well, I, just, I was just thinking there was something I definitely wanted to say as well about over here and confidence. Like as in uh, New York women are very confident. And it's it's um what's the word like it's when you say confident what do you mean like um, confident in what in what sense just in general so i guess they're able to communicate more what they want because there's they're told it's better to be confident and sometimes in ireland it's a bit like ash you're a bit full of yourself oh and, yeah you know, so although they, that's gotten a bit better don't you think? it has gotten much better and if it continues to get better where you can kind of then communicate and communicate in, why can't I speak? Communicate in what you want will also will also help there as well. But I do think there that's a big thing here with New York women is just they're so confident and they know what they want and they know how to explain it. Yeah, I mean the confidence is definitely there and then the comfortability with comfortability, the, the yeah. subject, you know. So then I guess they are maybe a, maybe they're just a further steps ahead with choking because they're further steps ahead. So maybe ten years, right? People will be listening to this podcast and they'll be like, Ah, Katie, what are you talking about? We're all getting choked. We're all getting choked, yeah. yeah. I've had requests from one or two Irish women for choking, by the way, just to let you know. Well, I did tell you with the guy I was super comfortable with, he did put his hand on my neck for a little bit, and I thought, I wouldn't mind if he squeezed it a little. And it was weird. But it was just because I was thinking kind of like, oh, it's a little bold. Because we had yeah, such nice little, like, it was like very tender sex that I was like, I wouldn't know. But if he had went too much, I would have been like, oh, God. Whereas I, with my ex, there was no control. There was no listening. There was no, yeah, I would, yeah. That, it could very quick slip into dangerous. You know, I guess we'll be having many conversations like this, but um, the last thing I'll say, just because we talked about going down yeah. in terms of uh, communication, like even that is very varied in that when you're down there, you you get some people that like really strong pressure yeah. and some people that like really light pressure. And how can anyone know, man or woman, who you are until you tell them? You know? and, and, and that's so interesting because I recently had when he was going down on me I always would have thought I hate when they use their fingers as well um, and so he went in with his fingers and I thought fuck I'm going to hate this but I thought you know what I just, I'll just give him a few minutes and then I'll tell him to take them out but then I was actually like oh actually I do like this just because he did it a different way than the previous yeah. it's like you just each person will do something different and yeah and you'll learn more yeah I, I this is the last thing I'm going to say okay I, I was with somebody one time, you know, we're just talking about like different pressure and shit. And I've had, I've, I've been with a few women in my life that have very specific things that you need to do to get them to orgasm from different positions. But I mean, talking about communicating, this girl was so specific 
that first of all, it had to be literally the lightest of touches, almost as if it was just the aura of your finger on her clitoris in a, in a particular pace and motion, right? For as long as she said, keep that pace and pressure. Then she would say, now, now you have to put your fingers inside. And then my fingers would be inside. And then she would be like, now back, soft, right? And then eventually there came a time where, you know, from back and forth, back and forth, and then eventually came some, okay, now push a little harder, a little faster. And then eventually it was like, now push it really, really hard. And then boom, she would go, but it was like literally. It's like choreography. It was, it was choreography. choreography. Okay, one thing we're learning. <laughs> Career in talking, You're and I got <laughs> My father would be disgusted. He'd be more disgusted yeah, about that. Yeah, he'd be disgusted. You, you can't articulate yourself. <laughs> not, not your. But anyway, uh, but but that that was very that was very specific. Yeah. Very very specific. Uh, and, and 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 then some women just come like you know every five seconds. But anyway, my point is that it's so important to communicate because if you are somebody that needs that specific thing then just tell the guy. And then for women, specifically my age group in Ireland who are going through what I went, and if you don't know what you want, just try different things. Be like, okay, try with the fingers. Oh, try, try move up here, try move over there. And fuck it, they can stay down there for a while and try it out. Until you yeah, but that's why the masturbation is particularly important it for women, because you gotta learn the stuff that you're yeah, into. Yeah. Now, I, I, I said that you have to, I have to end the conversation now, because you have a show. Oh, true. Well, can I say one last thing really quickly? What time is it? Where do you have to go? Yeah. Um, just about, when you said about smell and taste, that's something women need to get over as well. Do you know, I even find it quite sexy when the guy kisses me after going down on me, but that's like a weird power oh. trip for me. Well, that's a good one. Why don't you hold that phone for okay. the next time? Kissing after cuddling me. <laughs> you like it. Because I, I, well, I always ask, like, is that okay? What do you think? Do you like that? Are you talking to the viewer? I'm talking to the viewer. And what about the guys? Do you like, do you like when they're going to Well, that's good. But yeah, that's, that's a great follow-up question. So, so I guess you do have to go. Uh, any feedback do? Uh, that's our, our finishing question is, is it cool to kiss after cunnilingus? It's a good question, actually. It is. Is it cool to kiss after cunnilingus? Get back to us. Uh, and we'll have another episode. We haven't even figured out how many we, you know, we, we who knows when this is going up, what this is going up on. But yeah, by I, the time by the time it's up, we'll know when the next episode's going to be. Yeah, and keep giving us feedback. It really was helpful to kind of figure out because we're just figuring this out. So it's really thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And my dad doesn't hate me, so that's great. Yeah, no, nobody hates you. <laughs> okay, let's go. Bye. That's good. <laughs>